So now given this Java class product, what are the inputs that we need to give to JAXP to help it to convert this to an XML format? Well, think about what we've done so far. We haven't given any such specific inputs to JAXP to help it in the conversion, but we have seen an XML structure with this thing. So like I told you before, a simple POJO like this, it's, it's kind of pretty intuitive what needs to be the XML structure. Every member variable will be an XML element, and then the value will be the value of that XML element. So it's fairly straightforward. So in this case, I would be using custom JAXP input in order to override some of the default behavior. So if you notice the XML, so there are certain things that I want to change in this XML. I want to change the name of the root node. I want to change some of the names of these values. So I'm going to use some overrides to change the default behavior. So the way I provide information to JAXP in this class is by using specific JAXP annotations. So I have one annotation at the very top called at XML root element, which tells JAXP that this is actually the root element of the XML. So I can import from Java X XML bind annotations. So notice the word bind in the package. That gives the indication that this is actually a JAXB annotation because it's actually a binding API. So I import this. And now this has been declared as a root element. So the advantage of declaring a root element is I can actually customize some of the things. So if I do a control space here, you see I can specify a name and I can specify a namespace. So these are gonna be the names and the namespaces of the XML that gets generated. So let's say I choose a name and I call this product, okay? And now this XML has a root element as product. It's as simple as that. Okay, now I'm gonna add one more annotation at XML type. And if I check the import, again from XML bind annotation. Now, what is the difference between an XML type and an XML root element? Now, the root element indicates, as the name says, the root element. So the product is kind of like the root of the whole XML structure. But this root element could contain some other class as the member variable, right? Right now it's just basic primitives, like, you know, just have string and double. But now this had a member variable with another class, then that class would not be the root element, that class would just be the XML type. But this one is a root element, okay? But now why, why am I annotating the same class with both the root element and the XML type? The reason I'm doing that is by using the XML type, I get a few other things to customize. Now I'm gonna take this one, the prop order. Now the prop order gives me a way to customize the order in which these properties are getting displayed in the XML. So we have name, SKU, and the price. Let's say I have a specific order that I want in the XML. So for this example, let's say I want the price first, and then the SKU, and then the name, okay? So I can actually customize that by mentioning that order over here. And the way I mention the order is by opening up an array over here. So I'm gonna open up a curly brace, and uh, I have an array of strings. So I'm gonna say I want the price element first, and then the skew, and then the name. I'm gonna close the curly brace. So I am specifically defining a property order. I want the XML to have this order for the elements. So I want the price to come first, then the SKU, and then the name. So I can actually specify the order in which the XML is created. So that's why I'm using this XML type. If I was not specific about the order, I would not really need the XML type in this, at least in this scenario. Now, how about if I wanna customize the name of these as well? Right now, the name of these properties are the name of the XML elements. Now I wanna change that. I wanna have a custom name for my XML element. I don't want it to take the name of the member variable itself. So I can actually do that by providing one more annotation. So I'm gonna to go to the getter here. Now let's say I wanna name, I wanna change the name of the name attribute to a product name. So I go to the getter and then on top of the getter, I use the annotation XML element. 
Now XML element is again from XML bind annotation, like all the other annotations in this tutorial. And uh, here you can choose a lot of things here. You, you can choose the name, you can choose the default value, which is again interesting. If you don't have a specific value, you can choose the default. You can choose nullable, whether it's whether it can be null or not. Uh, it's not nullable in the XML world. It's called nullable, but it actually means the same thing. Whether you want to allow the element to be null or not, and whether you want it to be required, the type of the XML element, all that stuff. So I'm going to just customize the name here. I'm going to call this product name and uh, save. I don't need to customize all the other stuff. This is just for illustration. I'm just customizing this name. And uh, now before I publish this, there's one last thing I need to do. When you annotate any class with these XML or write with these JAXP annotations, you need to make sure that it has a public NOAR constructor. You notice here that I have a constructor which takes certain arguments. So we need to have a no args constructor. Why do we need that? We need that because we need a way for JAXP to initialize our, a new instance of this class. And if you have only one constructor with some arguments, JAXP doesn't know what arguments to pass to these things. We want JAXP to be able to create a new product. And if you have uh, a constructor with arguments, if we don't have a no args constructor, JAXP will not be able to create a new instance of product. So in order to let uh, that happen, we are going to create a new constructor. Which is a no arcs constructor. And now we are all set to republish. And if I open the tester page and test the get products version two, you can see that the XML has the order, the price, SKU, and the product name. And uh, of course, the name has been changed to product name. One thing you would have noticed is that the type name hasn't changed. It's still saying return. Any guesses on what we need to do to fix this? We have already covered this before. Well, it is the web result annotation. So it's not over here. You need to go to the method itself, where you're annotating with add web method, and say this has to have a specific web result name. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to annotate it with at web result and uh, fix the import. And I'm going to give a name as product and republish. And now if I call the same method, you see the header is now product. Okay, so in this tutorial, we looked at ways to customize the XML that gets generated when we have a custom class or a custom object that we are returning as a web service return type. And uh, we looked at a brief uh, introduction to JAXP and uh, we looked at a few annotations which let us customize the way the XML turns out. In the next tutorial, we'll examine one part of the WSDL and the SOAP response here that has been hiding from us so far. We haven't examined yet, and that's got to do with the fault message. So see you in the next tutorial.